Good morning, everyone. We'll just wait another couple of more minutes as people are still coming into the session. So thank you very much for your patience. Thank you very much for your patience. Good morning. My name is Nadia Chakya, and I'm on the steering committee for uh, the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance. Uh, the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance strives to enable more young people to join the discussion and overcome obstacles they face in doing so, such as the, the monetary aspects, the experience, the skill set, and also the network-related challenges. We have an open membership an open mailing list, list and open archives for everybody to be involved with. So what we aim to do is to empower youth who want to actively participate in the IGF's intersectional activities and initiatives. Um, we support the IGF, the MAG, and the IGF Secretariat, Secretariat in facilitating the active involvement and engagement of more young people on an equal footing with all other stakeholders in internet governance discussions negotiations, strategies, and processes. As a dynamic coalition, we gather all these people together uh, to form part of a discussion here within the IGF. So um, today I am here as your only representative for the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance. My fellow colleagues unfortunately had to excuse themselves. They were unable to attend this IGF session, but uh, thankfully I'm joined here today by Sue Sonia Herring from CDIC and Geralampos Kiritis. Uh, who uh, will be presenting the youth dig messages. So at the end of the Y6 session last year, we asked the question, um, how can people rise to the occasion to contribute to internet governments? And what a Y6 2018 priority should there be? So what we did in the last year is we, uh, after the meeting at the IGF, we were invited to meet with the cabinet 
of Commissioner Gar um, Maria Gabriel from the European Union to talk about priorities in internet governance and upcoming opportunities for young people in the EU. We discussed with the YC community uh, which particular issues they wanted to see uh, addressed by the Commissioner's Cabinet. And we talked about copyright issues, access to the internet, participation in the fake news debates and how the information disorder is being developed. Uh, we talked about safer internet and also about Euridic and CDIC participation as main topics. We were involved with the promotion of EU Code Week, so we encouraged stakeholders to host events and promoted the activities that were involved with it. We advised and support youth organization, companies and entrepreneurs to uh, manage the activities for this week and we aided with grant applications and, and to ensure that uh, people had the funding to be able to do the activities that they wanted to present. Additionally, we encouraged young uh, girls and women to participate and thrive with coding and uh, promote the EU of, uh, Code Week events in general. Additionally, we also represented um, at, uh, international, uh, part uh, at international conferences such as YouthDig, EuroDig, CDig, and um, at the Council of Europe workshop on youth participation. There are several uh, other um, groups that were involved. So in the Asia Pacific, the community outreach in ABAC to promote youth participation, they had an internet governance boost camp. They had a model ICANN meeting. Uh, they organized a youth internet governance camp. Um, and the ninth Asia Pacific Youth Internet Governance Forum and the Hong Kong Youth Internet Governance Forum. Digital grassroots. Um, in Africa, uh, which is a youth-led initiative working with youth uh, to proactively engage them in addressing internet-related issues in their communities, uh, did web literacy for the underrepresented, organized uh, mentorship schemes, and many other things including youth IGF initiatives in the underrepresented communities, working open and leading open for a healthy internet, and digital rights advocacy in the global south. Uh, that being said, I would like to give the floor to Susanya Herring to present CDIG and uh, her other activities. Hi. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here today with us. Um, a brief introduction. Uh, I'm the coordinator of Youth IGF Turkey, a member of uh, YCIG, and an executive committee member of CDIG, which stands for Southeast European Dialogue on Internet Governance. Uh, so, briefly, uh, I'd like to read out a few messages from this year's uh, CDIG and also talk about what we did in this year's Youth School, which is CDIG's uh, capacity building program towards uh, university and master students, which is um, youth. So, uh, at this year's annual meeting, we had uh, m many, many different sessions uh, on different topics, including digitalization in the region, digital skills, net neutrality, digital rights, cybersecurity, the click economy, data-driven technologies, and internet governance in Southeastern Europe. So uh, there's at least five, six messages from each uh, topic. So like I said, I'll only read out the ones uh, from the session, which was uh, on internet governance in the region. So resources, human and financial, are essential for building sustainability into IGF initiatives. And the impact of IGF initiatives is not easy to measure, but there are concrete examples of how the discussions held at IGF meetings had positive impact on organizations and countries. An example was the discussions at the Bosnia and Herzegovina IGF on internet exchange points led to the creation of an internet exchange point uh, in the country. So as you may all know, uh, on the global level, the discussion keeps uh, revolving around uh, what is the impact of the IGF or of the national and regional IGFs. So uh, we, I mean, both in Youth IGF Turkey and in CDIG, we are firm believers that this, these platforms for open and inclusive dialogue are very valuable and they do have uh, impact, if not instant impact. And as I said, I'd like to talk about the, this year's youth school, and there are some uh, members 
of the CEDA community in here as well, and thank you for uh, joining. We had a full day of debates. Like before the program, we had online meetings and a few webinars, which. Uh, included introduction to the IG ecosystem and its actors and during the uh, annual meeting our activity with the youth school focused on internet business models following the Cambridge Anal Analytica scandal and we uh, separated our students our participants into two different groups and one part presented the internet business side and the other part the user side and I won't get into too, mi too much detail but as you know they have clashing priorities and interests and we task them with coming up with a model that respects user rights and privacy while at the same time still uh, helps maintain a working business model a profitable business model all of this uh, can be found online in detail, or you can uh, come up to me and talk to me about it if you're curious to hear more. And soon we will be la launching the 2019 Youth School applications, and the applications are open to anyone from the region or residing in the region. And our region consists of 20 plus countries, uh, so not just strictly Southeast uh, East Europe. And uh, as closing remarks, uh, yeah, we organized Youth IGF Turkey uh, this past this past Thursday, and our topics included um, data-based entrepreneurship, uh, networks and security, introduction to internet governance, and uh, other topics, and, and and of course the GDPR and the the equivalent of GDPR in Turkey. And in the coming years, I hope to see youth from Turkey in this room as well, but it doesn't seem to be happening just yet. Uh, and as YCIG with, with Nadia and a few other YCIG members, we brought together a working group to increase youth participation at IGF 2018. We started the working group early this summer this past summer and our aim was to actively lobby for the inclusion of key participants uh, uh, youth key participants in specifically youth interest sessions so we mapped out uh, i think it's around 10 or eight sessions that were direct youth or ch children interest and then we also uh, send out a call through our membership to find out which youth experts would be attending the IGF in person this year and then we tried to bring together workshops which didn't have which 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 were talking about youth but didn't have youth as key participants and tried to bring them together with youth experts and uh, we reached out to the session organizing teams and to be honest the uh, feedback the replies weren't that many and weren't that uh, productive maybe I don't know what the right word here is uh, but yeah in total we, we reached out to maybe eight workshop organizers and we received replies only from three of them and two of them uh, mentioned that youth experts were w welcome to attend and join discussions from the floor which this is my personal opinion I find it completely unhelpful because as you all know no one needs an invitation to join from the floor uh, workshop everyone's open to raise their hand and talk anyway so that felt uh, as a non-answer and then towards the end like in the past few days we received a few uh, outreach or replies asking if we had very specific um, suggestions on youth experts like tailored things such as do you have an 18 year old person who works in uh, social media or between this a this uh, age range who who is not working who is not a professional blah, blah, blah. so my main point is I think we need more of you and we need more adults to collaborate with us to make youth participation active meaningful youth participation at the IGF a reality and beyond lip service thank you Thank you very much, Sonia. I would like now to give the floor to Harris to talk about Youth Tech. 
So I was a youth participant, both in Tallinn, U uh, U uh, Eurodig 2017, and also in this year Eurodig in uh, uh, Georgia, in by Council of Europe. So youth dig messages is messages that saved in the end of the pre-event that is part of Eurodig, the youth dig, and the messages are drafted by young people that they, are, they have their first touch with the internet governance sessions. So this year, our messages were split into five categories. Accessibility, digital literacy, internet that works for everybody, and digital inclusion, uh, also regulation of the internet. So in accessibility, uh, ensuring the quality of participation of young people from different backgrounds, especially underprivileged groups such as, but not limited to women, minorities, and LGBTIQ plus communities through funding mechanism by governors and private companies should be uh, increased. Also, ensuring a systematic approach for youth participation in structured uh, stru structures of the internet governance stakeholders, such as youth representation, oh, sorry, representation and decision-making bodies. In digital literacy, no one should tolerate misinformation nor give ground to those who create and share it. More resources to be, should be allocated to promote critical thinking on information disorder. Also, education is a vital uh, part for increasing digital literacy so that people can make informed decisions online in order to get most of their time on the internet and stay safe. Uh, an internet that works for everybody. Internet can be even more indispensable that ever, in everyone's lives in the future. Everybody should have the right to save the future of the internet and we need to ensure that it remains a global social resource that is open and benefits humanity. In order to achieve this, the development of the internet should be pursued in an inclusive bottom-up and multi-stakeholder process. Uh, regulation of the internet and data privacy and legal protection against cybercrime. Leg regulation of the internet involves rules which govern the internet and should be enforced by governments and intermediaries, while also constitutes constituting a mechanism which empowers and protects the rights of the end users. Legal protection against cybercrime should be comprehensive all crimes committed online should be dealt at the same seriousness as those committed offline. Cybercrime should be dealt with tools to, pre uh, to pertain to the online world. Uh, finally, digital inclusion. In order to foster digital inclusion, computerware as content and services should be usable and accessible by design on a non-discriminatory basis. Preventive and reactive uh, preactive sorry measures are necessary to better protect vulnerable groups such as but not limited again to child women ethnic minorities and L lgbtqi groups users should have more proactive call about calling out hate speech and online websites uh, we need to be more robust in ways to tackle discriminatory and dehumanitarian behaviors thank you very much harris I really appreciate these messages. These messages were made by your colleagues. Your colleagues have come together to meet with other stakeholders from different groups, from different areas, from different perspectives. They come from different academic backgrounds. They come from different uh, social economic backgrounds to have open discussions about these. Um, how, if you have the time, please take the time to read through these messages one more time and come back and join these discussions just like we'll have here today later about what you can do in, for youth participation. How would you like to see um, youth participation uh, evolve within IGF structures and what kind of topics should we be talking about? What topics should be on the agenda? What topics can young people be involved in and should young people be shaping while we are uh, improving and continuing uh, our discussions? So uh, that being said, having looked at the messages from last year, I would like to invite Alka Pulse from Eurodic to come uh, and present um, the upcoming um, uh, Eurodic for uh, 2019. Thank you, Nadia, for giving me the floor. Um, 
Yeah, so we heard last year your day has been in uh, Tbilisi in Georgia. Uh, it was a great success. Uh, we had also a youth program prior to uh, your day called Youth Day um, with around uh, 30 participants from, I guess, 17 different countries in Europe. Um, but first of all, let me explain what Yordic is. Yordic is uh, uh, the European Dialogue on Internet Governance. So actually that's the, the European version of the IGF. Um, but there are some differences between the IGF and what Yordic is. Is Yordic, um, the people itself create a workshop. It's, uh, the workshop creation is a bottom-up process. So everyone can join an organizing team and um, they create a workshop themselves. Um, and we also like, um, or we also encourage uh, youngsters to join the workshops. Um, so that's why we organize two days before um, your day itself, Youth Day. Uh, youth Day is a youth program uh, for youngsters between 18 and 30 years old um, from all European countries. Um, and what we do there is we, um, uh, you think, or your day or conference like the IGF can be quite overwhelming for you all. Um, that's what I also personally, uh, yeah, my per personal feeling was. Um, so that's why at UDIC we give a, a quick introduction of the, the subjects that, uh, that are being discussed and also uh, give a quick overview of, of the program and try to connect with other youngsters and also uh, subject matter experts to, to connect prior to um, your day itself. Um, so I invite you all to, uh, to join. And the, um, all, at, at this moment, the workshop, uh, or we can already submit issues for uh, workshop proposals. Uh, I guess it will close um, this month. Uh, yeah, yeah, end, end of this month. Um, and after that, the workshops uh, are being created and there will be a planning meeting on the 15th of January uh, in The Hague. Um, and that will be also the location where Jordic will be uh, next year in 2019. Uh, Jordic will be in um, The Hague, the Netherlands from 19 until the 20th of June. Um, and the application for UTIC opens around April. Um, so thank you for your attention, and uh, I hope to see you uh, around this week and also later in The Hague. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alka. And um, I really hope that if you're organizing something yourself, that you will also come and present that on our mailing list or on our Facebook page. We would love to attend. We would love to send people to come to your events. And as much as we hope that uh, next year we will be able to pre present some of your topics here um, at uh, this session so that we can show how young people are getting involved and what kind of messages we can create together. Um, we want to work on a local level. We want to work with people from all kinds of different backgrounds, not, the only, not only the people who are capable of managing to get to a particular location, to bringing all these messages from these remote locations or from um, popular house where there are interesting discussions to come together. These events are so incredibly important and incredibly great opportunity to network, to get involved and to participate in internet governance, that this is a really uh, such a grand uh, uh, chance to, to do something and to have your voice heard. So I do hope that you will get engaged and for those who are engaged, come and reach out to us for us to be there with you, to encourage the rest of the community to be there with you and, and to see if we can cooperate together and see uh, if there are any synergies together. That being said, normally in this part of the agenda, there's an elections update. 
Um, this year, the uh, we have we would have a new steering committee. However, we're still in the middle of the elections. There were no nominations for the African group. So normally, we have a steering committee which consists out of five individuals, each representing a respective region based on the United Nations regional groupings. So the, uh, these groups are the African group, the Asia Pacific group, the Eastern European group, the Latin American and Caribbean group, and the Western European and others group. There were no candidates for the African group, nor for the Latin American and Caribbean group. So they extended uh, nominations for a few more days. When there were no further nominations, we went ahead with the elections and that's where we are at this moment in time. So we hope to be able to announce the new steering committee over the mailing list in the next few days. However, as per our statutes, within the next two weeks, we will open nominations and I hope that you will reach out to your communities and encourage people from uh, the African group and from the Latin American and Caribbean group to nominate themselves or for you to nominate your friends to get involved so that we can actually get an active participation from all these uh, different groups together and that we can shape uh, an, an IGF agenda and an international agenda that can really support young people and their different communities. So we must move forward and therefore I would like to have a discussion about how the YSIC community can rise to the occasion to promote meaningful youth participation, to advocate for their rights and opportunities for young people in internet governance and create an environment in which young people can easier engage in internet governance processes. So to open the discussion, um, I would like to give the floor uh, to the Council of Europe to give some brief remarks about youth participation. Hello everybody, my name is Marius Gita. I work at the Council of Europe. For those of you who are not familiar with uh, what the Council of Europe is, is the intergovernmental organization on the continent, which has 47 member states which means that, uh, of course, it serves the interests of uh, the citizens of these 47 member states. Uh, you may wonder why the intergovernmental organization is uh, present here among the other stakeholders, and the answer is going to be simple, because uh, the organization itself did many, many things in regard to support of the presence of young people in the uh, internet governance, I would say, but also in the whole um, larger aspect of what it means participation of young uh, people. Uh, you may also wonder why the uh, banner you are having on your left uh, is uh, widely presented and the fact also is um, simple I would say because the Council of Europe had run a campaign on the no hate speech movement which was a very successful campaign that we did for a um, couple of years. The campaign just concluded uh, its activities in the spring uh, this year. The conclusions of the campaign uh, are, can be found in print uh, because I brought them with me. And this is, this is one of the key activities that we had among uh, the ones that we are working youth, uh, with because we consider the uh, empowering of young people being an essential element in the uh, participation processes. What we, are, what we continue to do is the fact that we want to deepen a bit the work that we've been doing, meaning that uh, we want to see exactly how young people can continue their involvement in the internet governance. And in order to do so, I just would like to let you know that we launched the call for authoring a handbook of what does it mean youth participa participation in internet uh, governance. For those that are interested in finding out more information uh, the call it's public has just been launched so those of you who are interested into contributing to such pu publication please get involved please get in contact with uh, with us with the institution but also with the colleagues that are around thank you thank you very much so now I lay the question before you how can we, young participants, the YSA community, rise to the occasion to, to promote youth participation. Where can we advocate for rights and opportunities for young people in internet governance? And how can we create an environment in which young people can easier engage in these processes? The floor is open to you. This is a discussion for you to 
to, ch uh, to really share what are your insights, how are things done in your communities, what are the struggles that you meet, and see if anybody else is meeting these same struggles, or perhaps they have overcome those. What kind of things can we do? And as we see here, we are not alone. We are many, there are many opportunities available to us uh, for us to actually give a voice, give a say. The Council of Europe here today says, we're reaching out to you. We have a call open. Come and talk to us about what uh, we need to, what can be done. The thing is, is that we can only know about these opportunities as we share it. And therefore, I open this floor to you, and I hope that you will take this opportunity to share this, and then afterwards that we can share this back in our local communities and tell them about all the opportunities that are going to arise, not only at the session here, but uh, during the sessions of the entire Internet Governance Forum. So please, uh, are there any questions, comments, concerns? Hello, I'm just jumping ahead. I'm Elisabeth Schaum. I'm here on behalf of the Council of Europe Youth Department, but I'm also co-organizing Youth Dick that has been mentioned many times now, so I won't go into that too much. Um, I just want to point out something that we maybe all don't really want to hear that much, is that there needs to be, in order for us to come here to be funded, needs to be a conscious effort um, by, by various organizations to make that happen. So, um, for example, Eurodic in its strategic plannings really makes an effort to bring in young people and now with, in cooperation with the Council of Europe um, to fund even more and to facilitate those capacity building moments, but that wouldn't happen just because young people gather. There has to be some form of um, continuous lobbying, as you point out, which, um, which can happen if we, if we continuously work together. I find it a bit troubling that now this has become a very Eurocentric discussion in the room, but I also pointed out there are no um, candidates for, for those groups of Latin America and the Carib Caribbean and African countries. And I feel like as as much as I, I love being involved in Europe and will keep being involved in Europe, um, our bigger question might be how to incorporate those who are not European and don't have those fundings around them that makes it possible for, for us to show up here. Thank you very much for your comments. Was there another comment over there? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, okay, my name is Predipta, I'm from Indonesia, and I would like to take point on uh, what Sonia mentioned previously on the session that just recently uh, sent uh, requests on specific youth experts. I went to that session this morning, and they didn't have any of uh, youth experts that they mentioned, and the report was not also quite comprehensive because um, it just it just it just uh, it just shown things that appear on the public very famous and. Unfortunately, it was also covering Western part of the globe, Western part of the globe as well. So it's only European and American, which was represented in the report. So unfortunately, it was not really inclusive at the moment. However, I think this also relates to my my, my comment that we as youth at the moment needs to point out what would be our expertise and why do the rest of stakeholders needs us, and we also need to. Um, bring them to our, um, to exist, that, that, that we exist, that they have to wear that we exist and our voice matters. I, I actually love what Internet Society has, uh, Internet Society's program with Count My Voice program, where many youth champion in the local area, local level, being uh, shown, being presented of work that they have done with internet and how the internet uh, really matters to youth champion at the local level. This is something very interesting that that uh, can be done in the, in future um, steps, and also approach to relevant stakeholders like government and uh, private private business that has the, the capability, I think, to to also impact the uh, impact the policy, which should be done in the local level, not only in the regional or international level, because after mm -hmm. all, we at the local level are the one. Who uh, aware? Who are currently aware with the current situation as well? Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any other comments, questions? Please. 
Hi, my name's Ioana. I'm with Media Legal Defense Initiative from England. This is actually my first IGF, so I'm still a bit new to all of this. My question was about trying to um, foster an interest in internet governance, and especially in terms of partnering with universities and perhaps having some sort of education network, not just in Europe, but uh, worldwide, as we've already mentioned, is quite important. And I was just wondering if you've tried this in the past or if there was any possibility for this, because I know my university didn't even have anything in internet law or policy, and it's just been me trying to find organizations such as this to kind of keep developing my interest and my knowledge in it. Uh, thank you very much for your question. Uh, so we as YSIG haven't directly uh, addressed this, but there is a, a an, an, I, I don't know if I would call them an organization, but there is GigaNet. Um, I don't know if you're already familiar with them, but GigaNet is a, a group of um, educators, academics, who are involved on in internet governance issues, and I think they have their, um, um, their conference the day after the IGF. Uh, there are many of them who are walking around here, but if you are interested, I can give you uh, um, uh, um, details on how to sign up to their mailing list, and then you can find out about opportunities within the academic sphere on uh, what uh, the academics themselves are, are doing in terms of organizing themselves, what topics they're talking about, and um, how they're fostering discussions, and perhaps that might be an opportunity for you to explore on how to engage with universities and, and setting up an education network. Sorry, if I could just follow up. Uh, part of my question was more on having a youth dig or uh, you advertise more towards university students in order to garner you know, more interest and more support from that strata of youth participation as well. Okay, thank you. Um, for this year's IGF, we launched a Join Us campaign in French to reach out to local French communities um, to be able to attend here um, today. Uh, we hope to be able to extend that for other opportunities, but we are only as strong as our members are. Um, we hope that um, for um, any upcoming initiatives, if people tell us that we can actually promote that in advance and set up campaigns, we have uh, some wonderful uh, designers that uh, are part of the YC community that can make beautiful posters and, and logos and then can help support in, in that regard. So thank you very much for your comment and that's certainly something that we can take on board for 2019 to make sure that uh, these initiatives, whether that's in Europe or um, also the other uh, regions, um, are presented and promoted that way. Are there, um, Sonia, would you like to go? Um, also, I don't know if you were here in the beginning of the session, but uh, like I said, CDIG's youth school is uh, particularly aimed at university students and uh, master's students. And talking about this conversation getting uh, a bit too Eurocentric, I would like to re-mention uh, digital grassroots, which a lot of the members can't be, founding members can't be here today, but uh, they attended last year uh, with the contribution of ISOC and since created a truly international community of young people, which they uh, conducted online trainings and assignments, and they had three cohorts, and the third one was entirely in French, and I just wanted to underline their impressive work since they're not, they, they couldn't be here to talk about it themselves. I believe uh, Alka wanted to make a, qu a quick remark, and then we'll go into the back. Uh, yes, I did. Um, my name is Elke Pals. I'm now speaking on behalf of the Dutch Youth IGF. Um, and what, what we did in the Netherlands, we had a group of like 100 students and we discussed um, issues that we found important. And uh, one of the issues was cybersecurity and then mainly um, how to deal with hacking. So one of the issues was responsible disclosure. Uh, and we had a whole afternoon um, discussing um, about the, how, how to deal with uh, hacking as a community. So we invited uh, law enforcement agencies, um, hackers, and yeah, a whole bunch of uh, people. And we discussed issues around that. 
Um, but I'm from the Netherlands, and that's my perspective. But I guess we're with quite a few youngsters here in the room, and I'm curious if if we got the time um, to hear a best practices or any other issues that are being discussed in other countries. Great, thank you very much. I'll take a comment from the back first. No, yes, please. Um, hi, my name is Poppy, I'm from South Africa. So in terms of youth participation, um, I think that we should allow the youth to have a voice. Um, so having more faith in the girl child when it comes to technology. So I believe that the girl child is still overlooked and encouraged to opt for more caring careers, especially in, in um, less developed countries. And so we need more and more female youth pioneers in internet governance. Also, just encourage learning in the digital space, um, especially disadvantaged areas, because I think that that should be a more focal area. Um, lastly, so this allows young people to develop their thinking capacity and actively seek solutions for the problems that they encounter. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much for your comment. Are there any other further comments from the room? Please. Hi, uh, I'm Ayuta. I am from India, and I'm a youth at IGF fellow here. Uh, so uh, we organized the first uh, Youth IG of India um, three weeks back, and uh, it was a success. And uh, we had uh, 150 participants, and out of which 90% were women. So for me, uh, um, so yeah. So I actually wanted to talk about um, the event, uh, just just um, talk about how it went on. Uh, so we had we discussed a lot of uh, issues that went on that are going on in India. We covered the basics of uh, internet, internet governance. We had a multi-stakeholder role play on connecting the next billion. And then we had a panel discussion from various stakeholders, lawyers and technique, technical people on privacy and sta safeguards in the internet. So since it was the first year at IGF, we wanted to increase the participation. So we had 150 participants and uh, people uh, from various other uh, IG organizations there to speak, to help. Um, my uh, so. We faced a couple of challenges because India is um, culturally very diverse. There are multiple ethnic groups, and there are, I would say there are challenges and there are some restrictions also. And uh, we wanted to make sure that there are um, a lot of girls um, involved um, at um, our youth IGF, the first youth IGF. Um, but um, from your experiences, I would like to know how do you increase the absorption rate? How do you uh, make sure that people are interested? And how should we go about and um, f from the next year onwards um, to expand uh, youth IGF in India? Thank you. Thank you very much. Does anyone want to answer that question? This is your floor. This is your discussion. This is your debate. Please go ahead. Hello, um, my name is Daniel Bilopio from Uganda. I think um, I like the idea of what uh, Ahita and uh, the Indian team did. I, I just think that we should kind of adopt the same in uh, different uh, IGF chapters all over the world to see how it goes. So thereby we shall be able to have um, experiences and share responses that can uh, resonate with what the other colleagues are facing from uh, the different countries. So I think it's a brilliant idea to be able to hold um, youth IGFs in uh, different chapters and perhaps actually have um, youth IGF ISOC chapters, perhaps in uh, various institutions within the different uh, chapters to see how we can have responses to such things. Yes, thank you. I think these are both wonderful comments. Uh, what I would highly encourage you to do is that in 2019, at some point, there is an opportunity to propose topics that you can discuss during an IGF. One of the topics could be how, are, how can youth IGFs bring together, and if you two would like to join together, or if you know other youth IGFs that are kind of contributing and, uh, w and, and you think would also want to be involved, perhaps you can propose the topic to the IGF, and if that gets uh, selected by the, by the MAG, by the the, the body that uh, sets the agenda, then you'll be able to have the discussion and, and, and see and bring all these different insights together. And I really hope that um, if you decide to go uh, ahead with that or if you need any support with the proposal, we will be here to, to foster that. And 
um, next year, whether I think that's in Germany, whether if you are able to come and that we can find ways to ensure that all these different groups can come together and, um, and, and foster this discussion that you would like to raise. Thank you. Um, I saw earlier there was a, a comment or a question. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, my name is Alex Smith. I'm from the United States and I also work at Facebook doing social impact work. I had a question similar to one that was asked previously about recruitment. So in North America, it's definitely a little bit more desolate in our representation here. And I was wondering in regards to university representation and connecting with different organizations that may be interested in fostering youth involvement in forums such as these, what are the best ways to do that? Does anyone want to share their experiences in regards to this? Um, please. Well, um, hello, my name is Dominic Scherer and I'm also here on behalf of the Council of Europe and uh, we have been working in internet governance as Marius has just said before and uh, I would say it has been quite successfully when we, s when we look at, for example, the No Hate Speech Movement campaign. But I think it's also important to see that there are certain barriers um, that make it more difficult for young people to effectively be part of this conversation. And if I want to break it down, I think probably there's two um, that, that would come to my mind very strongly. Uh, one of them is the content that is not very simple and spread across young people and I think there is really a need to raise awareness first that the topic is relevant to young people to create interest but then to also in, um, ensure that there's this base knowledge because otherwise as Auke said before the content is very intimidating so there needs to be a format that also prepares young people to interact and I think that's where, where these youth IGFs or youth chapters of local chapters can come in um, and I think that's where the second kind of barrier comes in because these events they are designed for adults um, and it is very important that the process can be made in a format that is also accessible to young people and um, with that I think the, the youth IGFs can really also play a big role in preparing young people, not only with regards to the content, but also to the process and accompany them in how can we meaningfully implement these and interact with the chapter on the IGF. So we can have youth experts prepared and so we can also ask for them in, in a, with a stronger voice. So if I want to sum it up, it's really being aware, being informed and shaping the process so it's youth friendly and in encourages youth participation. Thank you very much for your comment. On my own behalf, um, from, from my personal experience, I see the issue kind of as, as two things. Firstly, when we talk about internet governance, does everybody exactly know what that means? When I started working in internet government, so I, I, I specialize in information warfare, so the whole fake news debate is the thing where you can keep me going on for hours and hours and hours. So when we talk about kind of those type of issues, you don't necessarily realize that you work in internet governance. If you are working in data protection, you don't necessarily know that you're working in internet governance. So when you're reaching out to students and people, sometimes it's more tangible for, for young people to, uh, to say, you know, I'm engaged because I work on this topic rather than, oh, how to get them involved in internet governance. People think internet governance is not really with me. Internet governance could be law or could be policy, which is not necessarily my thing. So for people to then reach out and to talk to you about internet governance. How are we shaping and forming a discussion to include people within the recruitment? So I see that as one of the, uh, one of the topics which could be a, a difficulty in engaging young people. And then the second thing is, in, in terms of recruitment, is always funding. So when there's only limited funding uh, uh, opportunities, it depends on your community. If you're in a type of community where you're telling all your friends, hey, I got into this opportunity, you should all do it, then you will have massive outreach and I've seen some uh, incredible uh, applications where you had from just one school maybe about uh, 100 or 200 applications for, for, one, for one event. 
but then there are also people who don't share these kind of initiatives. So it is also part of the communities whether or not you're willing to share the opportunities that we share uh, among each other. So firstly, you need to share it with us so that we can share it with other people. But then when we do share things with you, it's also your responsible participation that you then share with other people. Uh, so it is as much as a, a, a responsibility uh, of kind of one area as much as it's a community responsibility. I see that has elicited a, a, a lot of discussions, but I'm also conscious that we only have uh, a limited amount of time. So um, I saw can I, three, four hands. Can I ask you to keep your remarks very shortly? We'll just take them one after the other, starting from the right side of the room. Uh, okay, thank you, uh, Diana, Internet Society IGF uh, Ambassador. And thank you, Sona, for the introduction uh, of Digital Grassroots. Just wanted to add uh, something. More than a month ago, we have launched uh, a petition at change.org. It's called uh, Youth Inclusion in Global Internet Governance. It's an open letter to representatives uh, of national and international internet uh, governance uh, bodies. And we now have uh, almost uh, 400 uh, signatures and to help us get more please go to internet society booth they have an ipad there where you can sign directly or you can go to digital grassroots booth and we can guide you with the link and you can help us get more signatures thank you thank you very much i remember there was comment in the back I'm Carson from Tanzania. Uh, my remark is uh, I think it's about time that we create uh, general public knowledge that's adopted to the education hierarchy when it comes to internet and internet governance that we see we have young children, three-year-olds who can really interact with uh, whatever uh, online gaming and stuff. So if we can implement some sort of uh, strategy or some sort of a public knowledge in which uh, from a young age people can be trained on the importance of the internet and how they can have the literacy skills I think in the next generation we can have really uh, competent people and, and better decision makers you know to lead the way. Wonderful. You wanted to make a brief comment? I'm Jennifer from Navmission.Asia, so I'm one of the organization, uh, organizers of uh, Navmission Ambassador Program and YIGF for uh, the youth participation in the Asia Pacific region. So, like, talk about like recruitment and everything, youth participation in internet governance. I found struggles too, because like Asia Pacific, we have different levels of development, unlike Europe or other regions. Uh, some people concerned about. Um, internet access, the other may be already concerned about net neutrality or the equality on the internet. So like, uh, especially this year, we have the Net Mission Ambassador Program. We make it more regional for Asia. So we hope that like today in here, uh, some other organization, especially from Asia, we can make connections because we really need to get connect uh, uh, with other young people in the region and in the, around the world so we can uh, actually get engaged and as, at least like sometimes start with raising their awareness so that we can move on working our programs in our regions together like start from getting connect so I really hope after these sessions you ca you guys have if you guys have time can go to the booth uh, we are from dot Asia organization and we can find me so we can see whether we can work on something Thank you. Thank you very much. And there was one last comment. I'll just sit here. Sorry. Um, Menno Etma from the Council of Europe, anti-discrimination department and also involved in the hate speech movement. I think your point was very correctly uh, that I think we need to see that Internet governance is much wider than, and it's all not only about youth participation, but also youth participation cross-section with other issues. Um, I think the entry point for young people is maybe not necessarily internet governance directly, but for example, concern about gender, or concern about non-discrimination, or concern or about participation in local issues. Um, so I think we also need to really focus on where are young people, what are the teams, themes of young people in general, and what's the intersection with internet? I mean, I was just in a session on uh, gender and uh, internet, uh, internet governance and gender, and there were lots of young people there, actually, young women speaking up about the issues of access and non-participation in society, not having access to the internet because of gender discrimination. And I think there is where youth participation also really comes in, and, the, and young women are there, and there's many platforms where young people are speaking. So we need to get those people in these IGFs. Thank you very much for your comment. 
Now that we are um, going to the last few minutes of our session, I would like to um, make a, a couple of comments that firstly, remember that we have our elections, that we are looking still for a, a, a member from, for, to represent the African group and someone to represent the Latin American and Caribbean group. It's important for us that we can actually reach out to the communities and have someone that understands the, the, the atmosphere and, and the region in, in which you're working with so that we can make sure that we provide you with the advice and support that you need and, and working with the bodies that are associated with it. So it's, as I'm the steering committee member that represents Western Europe and the others group, um, I, I enjoy a good working relationship with the Council of Europe. We also, uh, we also reach out to ASEAN. We also reach out to the African Pacific a Caribbean group and uh, the African Union. So these are opportunities that are still open and we need people to be willing to engage with us to be able to be that liaison to uh, allow uh, young people to engage in those, uh, uh, into those spheres and areas. One thing that we do with uh, YSIG is we have our own campaign at the end of our DC session, which is the We Missed You session. We take one photo of uh, everybody who attended our session and uh, we make a beautiful collage out of it and then we share online that we missed you and we hope to see you at IGF 2019. So I kindly would like to invite all of you to come and join me for this photo um, so that we can say, hey everyone, we missed you at IGF 2018 and we hope to see you in 2019. And with that, I would like to close this session. I would like to thank very much um, everybody here for participating. I would also like to thank uh, the the captioner who is um, uh, live captioning this. And I hope you have a wonderful IGF. I'm here the entire week. So if you have any questions, concerns, if you want to reach out to me on working uh, on projects or any collaborations, or you're looking for partnerships, please do reach out. Whether or not I am your representative for your particular group, we can find opportunities in which we can engage with the entire world. Thank you all so much and have a good uh, IGF. So for those who are interested in the photo, if you could gather in the right corner so that we can take the photo against that back wall.